Hey guys, Quinn here. Uh, I've been going through some scopes thinking about what's going to work best and I'm looking for something for my 6.5 Creedmoor and I think maybe I found it. This is the Miopta Optica 6. It's the Mio Pro line so it's one down from their premium scope line. And it comes in a 3 to 18 by 50 millimeter setup and we're going to talk you through some of the features and benefits of it, what we think about it out of the box, and some cool technology that they have built in here. Uh, I purchased one of these that is a 3 to 18 by 56 that is on my 243. Needed something in uh, for my Creedmoor. The example that I already have has capped windage and capped uh, elevation. Now that's really good for a duplex hunting reticle where I am zero to maximum point blank range and then I just have to um, remove the cap and dial if I'm going to go past 320 yards. The Creedmoor carries force a bit farther. It uh, adds a couple hundred yards of effective range uh, by using that round. So um, I wanted something where it had an exposed dial also, I, that other, the other scope that I have is a SFP scope, which is fine with a simple duplex because I'm not worried about the uh, reticle size changing and, and changing the subtensions. Uh, and I like to be able to see that reticle at lower magnifications. This example, uh, Miopta makes first focal plane scopes as well. This thing, <clears throat> these retail around the eight nine hundred dollar mark. Uh, you can get them a little bit less when they are on sale. I think generally they punch well above their price point. They have a, I don't know, six or eight different reticle choices in different BDCs. This one is doped for the Creedmoor. I would say that on the instruction manual, it said that this reticle is set up for a 120, 120 grain bullet with a 0.421 uh, BC uh, firing at 2900 FPS. I ran the ballistics on that round and I came up with different subtensions than what are in here. However, if you use the Federal Fusion 140 grain bullet that's fired at a 2725 uh, FPS and has a BC of 0.439, pretty standard Federal Fusions, the reticle matches perfectly all the way out to a thousand yards. Speaking of the reticle, it is well proportioned for the magnification range. Sometimes in an FFP scope, the crosshairs are such that they're too small to use when you're on low magnifications. With this down on three, I have no trouble using the crosshair and I can use the holdovers. Generally, when I'm shooting at distance, I'm somewhere between 7 and 12x, 8, 10x right in there. So as you spin the magnification ring up, the reticle grows and here we are on 8 and the subtensions are perfectly proportioned to where you want them to be to be able to see and use those holdovers and they also have um, wind holdovers as well. If you decide you want to dial it's got a capped exposed elevation turret that locks so you pull, dial, lock, that's it and then you set it right back down when you're done. Windage, as I said, is cap that has a nice knurled rubber uh, coating. Parallax side is on the left. It goes all the way down to 10 yards if you have close in work that you want to do or some kind of target shooting, and then obviously it goes up to infinity. Uh, Miopta includes these uh, lens covers that have the little rubber bikini style that keep your lenses protected. It's nice to throw that in. It also includes a throw lever that goes into one of one, two, three, four different holes right here. So you can mount that throw lever wherever it is most natural to you to use, as well as where it will not um, interfere with your um, uh, bolt, your bolt action. It has diopter adjustment as most things do. One thing I'm really excited to try about this some of their reticles come with this technology as an option. It's the Dichrome, Dichroma Tech, I think is what it's called. The Dichrotech. Dichrotech reticle. This reticle does not require any batteries. However, the way the reticle is etched, 
it uses ambient light that is transmitted through the scope and actually illuminates the reticle based on that those light wavelengths. The reticle is partially translucent. You can it's the first reticle I've ever used that you can see through and right now it's daytime and this thing is a bright red color. The way that they engineered it is that it is smart if you will in that the um, technology that allows it to appear red will maximize contrast with the surroundings. So in lower light or against certain backgrounds that the color right now it is not a bright red it is kind of a light red. If I point it to let's see if I can get it to change I think it goes all the way into like a green. I plan on taking this to pretty rugged places in West Texas and I'm excited about the prospect of having a uh, reticle solution that doesn't require a battery but gives me that high contrast. It will be interesting to see how well it does uh, kind of at first light and at last light because this reticle is such that it does need ambient light to function. However, when I'm out looking for Audad, it's typically daytime and I'll be so far out in the field that I don't know if I'll be in a position where I'm trying to eke out every little bit of last light because I'll need to get back to base camp at some point in time. Um, feels really well built, it's about 30 ounces. Uh, it's got a nice field of view, it comes in at about 33 feet field of view. On the low end, the magnification ring has just the right amount of tension. The thing feels like it's, a, it's built like a tank. This is manufactured, or at least assembled in Czechoslovakia. They do manufacture many of their parts in-house. They are an OEM manufacturer and they have sold products or manufactured products for other companies. I think the first Zeiss Conquest these guys were responsible for. They've had a couple of contract jobs I think with Cabela's to make quite a bit of the glass for them. And now they're they kind of have their own banner and they're, and they're playing their own flag. So they know what they've been doing. They've been making scopes for almost a hundred years now. Uh, and this really suits my needs. Particularly if you want to dial for elevation, hold for wind, the turrets are well thought out and well designed to accomplish that and the glass is really clear and bright on this. I was looking at a target that was about 800-900 yards away on 15x resolution was such that I had no trouble making out the letters in the Tyvek. It was a new construction home and it had that house wrap on there and I was able to discern um, to resolve out the letters that were stamped onto that house wrap from like 800 yards away. I think this punch is well above its price point. I don't think the illuminated reticles are a big price difference. And if you wanted to get into something similar that was a first focal plane scope that also has side focus and either illumination or a technological solution for illumination uh, with this kind of magnification from say a loophole, you would be spending probably two or three X what this costs you. And I don't know if you're going to get two or three X the value. Although they do well with the lightweight and the CDS dial is a, is a neat invention. I have a loophole scope, I have nothing against them, nor am I a fanboy. I have a Vortex PST Gen 2, this is every bit as good as that. This is every bit as good as my VX3 HD. Um, I really like what these guys are doing and I'm excited to get this out and check it out. I think that's it. Here's your introduction, 3 to 18 FFP as opposed to the other one I have which is SFP and it has the exposed turret. It's not too difficult to unlock. Right amount of tension. The clicks are audible. I just really like what they're doing here in a nice package. We'll get this mounted up to that Franke um, Momentum Elite. Kind of doing a uh, Italian gun, Trans Alps into Czechoslovakia. Uh, an Italian Czechoslovakian rig that I'm going to take out to the mountains and look for goats. I think it's going to work really well. So uh, we'll do some more testing with this. I'm probably going to take it out to the range do a tracking test. I'm going to take it out to the field and beat it around a little bit in the brush, see how it does. So you might get two or three reviews of this one because I'm really going to take this thing and put it through its paces. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys soon. Take care. Be safe. Have fun. Bye.